I just got out of prompt care. They took a look at my foot. And, uh, right now it really hurts to play. It's on my left foot, which is my hi-hat foot. You keep time with your left foot basically at all times. And it's something that took a very long time for me to, to develop. But now that I've gotten into this way of playing, it is very hard not to keep time with your left foot. It could be really painful for the gig. So I got antibiotics, 10 years with the SCAS band. And hopefully the gig doesn't kill me. A lot of people lately have been saying, man, I can't believe 10 years has gone by or where's the time gone? And I'm sure I've said those sort of things at some point, but the truth is, is that I remember everything. I've, I remember every week struggling through trying to get an arrangement done. I remember weeks of trying to make sure people were at rehearsal or calling venues, trying to get concerts booked i remember going to menards and buying nine to ten plungers at once and getting the weirdest look from the cashier and i'm so grateful to still be doing it 10 years later but i have to be honest that it's never been uh, super easy and for the first probably seven years of the band i didn't find really any enjoyment out of performing like you you think you're able to actually like say these things like in the moment like oh where are you gonna you know where are you gonna see yourself in 10 years or looking back 10 years you always think you can handle a question like that but i don't know looking at it now it's like daunting just a decade that's really oh my god i can't it's hard to no, say I anything know. about it it is it's hard to put into words like that music for me has always been the one thing I really connect with in life. It's weird that, that that is that way because growing up, I had teachers who pushed me and wanted me to be better, but I had some teachers who didn't really act like they were happy I was in class with them. Thank God that the movie School of Rock came out because that inspired a man, Jim Voraz, to come and start a youth rock band at my church. Sixth through eighth grade, I ate, slept, and breathed this band. And that's all I wanted to do. And my best friends were all in this band. I would run home after school, turn on the Xbox that my brothers had, and I would blast the TV as loud as I could, and I would play along to the songs that we did. Every single day, I had like a mini concert in my own house, and I just, I loved every second of it, and I looked forward to Sunday rehearsals. That's all I wanted to do throughout the week, because it's the one place that I felt completely accepted and supported by other people, besides my parents and my family. And then when I would go to school, I didn't quite feel that way. When I got to high school, that group ended, and I needed something, so I started my own band, the ska band. I started writing music. Even though I wasn't perfect at running a band or doing things, I at least knew enough from Jim and what he did to know what I needed to do to start a band and how to get it working. The hard part is that I went from a band that we were all teammates, we all worked together, and then going into a leadership position it was really difficult. They didn't exactly see it as we're all in this together I, I can I remember several times frantically getting music printed off trying to finish a song for rehearsal get into rehearsal and then seeing everybody in the band had been there for hours playing video games together and hanging out and for some reason I was the only one not invited and as I get older I, I I try to be more understanding and think maybe I was doing something that was uh, not, maybe they didn't want to hang out with me for some reason. But the thing that was hard for me is that music being the only thing I really had, 
I thought if I could just write a song that is so good or so much fun to play that they will have to like me. They'll have to be my friend. They'll have to want to be around me. That never really happened. I worked so hard trying to do that and then still had people who behind my back would talk about how horrible my music was or how bad I was at running a band or whatever it was. And that was really tough and really broke me down quite a bit. And then it'll pop up another oh! Give it like an hour. Video of me. Hey, you know, I'm trying to get some uh Doing a doing a vlog, you know, so we got to get it all all good. Yeah, I know it is. It is hot in here. Yeah. I met several people at ICC. We became friends. This idea, I had always kind of had this idea like, oh, it'd be so cool to run a big band. But I always thought that's impossible. Our very first singer was named Joe Crum Ryan. And I heard Joe sing a solo. And for some reason, there was just something about the way he sang it that I thought, I think I can do this. And he sat down after singing and I leaned over to him and said, you want to start a big band? And I'm, I think he just was like, yeah. We just started pulling some tunes of some songs we really liked and started going for it. It was really, really fun. And the first concert we ever played was in a thunderstorm under a pavilion. It was just this beautiful sort of poetic feeling of like being free in this storm. You know, it really felt like my my friends and my, my band. I think I was always looking for it was like a teacher who was telling me, like, you're great, you can do this, and, like, encourage me, because usually it was, like, you know, you sound like crap on that gig, and you really should be embarrassed by how bad you sounded, and you need to practice more. And that was always so hard to hear, and it was painful, because I was having fun at the gig, and then I get told I was horrible. For the first seven years that Skaz was playing, a lot of my motivation was to... Uh, prove myself to these people, teachers, uh, jazz guys in the area. I wanted to prove that I'm just as good as you. I can do this. I can be with the top dogs, you know. The more I worked and the harder the music got and the more complex and all that stuff, it started to lose its value of fun for myself. I would overanalyze everything we did, and I just felt awful. And that was the first seven years of playing in the band. I'm not going to go into a whole lot of detail, but there were several several instances where some of these people that I was trying to impress had these conversations with me. And I'll only tell one story. There's a bunch of them, but there's one story in particular. Did this concert with another band. I was going through a really rough time working two jobs. A couple months after this concert had happened, one of the guys in this band came up to me. To, I just need two minutes of your time. 
I said, okay, what's going on? You know, that concert was a real failure. No one showed up. It's your fault. You didn't advertise it. You didn't do anything. It once again was the same attitude of you suck. You should be better. I would never treat somebody like that. I try to be nice in the moment and just say, well, yeah, I'm really sorry you feel that way. While I was trying to explain myself, he put his hand up in my face and said, like I said, I only need two minutes of your time turned around and walked away from me and that just kind of slammed that coffin shut I was done and that was the spark that really inspired me to stop caring about what other people think and a little while after that some of us start talking about is the music really reaching people does the audience actually enjoy what we're playing we decided to change our direction from playing just old classic jazz pieces to playing songs that everybody knows. It wasn't easy. We actually had a really, really big fight in the middle of a rehearsal because a majority of the band did not want to do this new direction, and they were really upset, and they didn't understand why we are doing it. And it actually came to a point where I said, okay, we're going to do one concert with this set list that I've done, which is like over six months worth of work for me to arrange and do. And I said, if the audience doesn't enjoy it, we will be done. We'll never, if they don't enjoy it, we'll never do it again. But if they do enjoy it, and you see them smiling, you see them singing along, you see them dancing, you need to reconsider what our job is as a band. 15 minutes into that concert, and people were singing along, they were smiling. It was something we had never really seen before in seven years of playing. And all of a sudden, we were having the best concert we had ever had probably since the very first concert we d ever did. I have had so much fun playing the last three years of this band. More fun than I've ever had playing. My focus has changed from trying to impress the Peoria jazz scene and now my focus has shifted to entertaining the audience in front of me. My goal is to give them the best night of their year. And if I can do that, that, that makes me happy. Late night, come home, work sucks, I know. She no roses, but I'm not there. Surprises let me know she cares. Say it ain't so, I will not go. Don't you like to get me home?
myself with people who and love each other and being around each other I, I used to put up with a lot of negativity and people who would talk back in rehearsal or act like jerks they bring everybody down I don't care if you're the greatest trumpet player in the world if you come in and you insult the guy next to you I, I don't want you in my group would a lot of people say well that's detrimental to you in your band and your sound yeah maybe it is detrimental but I don't really care anymore I want us to be a strong group who enjoys being around each other, enjoys performing together, and can put on the best show possible. And I, you know, I have been so blessed to have so many people. I mean, there is over a hundred people in the last ten years who have sat in with this band or played in this band for a period of a period of time. And every single one of them contributed in some way to build this group. And I have to thank every single one of you who have done that because even if you just sat in for one gig you are a member of this family. There's so many good people in this band, and I just I love you all, and thank you so much for what you've done. I always felt like 10 years was this milestone that if I reached, it kind of proved to, referring back to my old goals, it proved to the people in the area that I can do this, and even though I don't care what they think anymore, um, it's a personal goal for me now, and I'm really proud that I made it to 10 years. I'm excited to see where we go next.